Right, folks, this is the activity for uh, the morning lab uh, on May 10th. Uh, you're asked to create a model that's shown below and do a finite element analysis of it, assuming that the following conditions are met. First of all, uh, we are assuming that it's made out of steel using default properties in, in, in the database. And uh, there are some instructions on how to uh, kind of elements you use, what size, etc. But here's the situation. Uh, it says that uh, the inside of this hole, the inside surface of this hole is completely clamped. And that face here, this T-shaped face, is subjected to a pressure of 1 MPa. Now, uh, you're asked to use as many planes of symmetry as necessary or as they exist. In this particular problem, if you thought about it, this is clamped, this is loaded, there's only one plane of symmetry, and that's really to cut it along that line. So what I'm going to do, I will actually create the whole model, and then later on create a plane here, if it's not already there, and then cut or split this thing into half and then proceed with the rest of the problem. Now, it's uh, you, each of you will have their own way of making this uh, geometry, but here is the way I'm going to do that. And uh, uh, please go ahead and do uh, as you see fit. Okay, first of all, let me start with the part file. Part file. Okay. Immediately save it. So file, save management, save as. I'll make a folder here. I'll make a folder called uh, Morning Activity. Activity. Morning Lab Activity at three. Morning Lab Activity. And uh, it is uh, uh, May 10th. 24. Okay, so we put the stuff in that folder for this particular problem. <clears throat> now, I'm going to change my units, so tools, options, for length, I'm going to use millimeters, millimeters, for pressure, uh, both pressure and stress, I'm going to use uh, MPA, megapascal, if I can find it here, megapascal, right there. And I'll do the same thing for uh, stress, although this will probably do it, but uh, anyway, I'll do it for stress. Let me click on magnitude to put this thing in alphabetical order, go to stress. Right there. I'm going to change this thing to also MPA. I don't have a force here, but uh, okay, if I did have a force, I would change it to Newton also. Now, <clears throat> my strategy is the following. To do this problem is the following. Let me see if I can find this thing. I will make that top T with the dimension that's given and then pad it down, pad it down, and then make the side the side of this, uh, this, this rectangle and pad it in the length direction, okay? So uh, please be my guest and look at these dimensions and uh, hopefully I haven't made any mistake. We'll see that. So on that vertical plane, I will sketch. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, because I'm doing the T, let me go on the top, on the XY plane and sketch the T, okay? So it looks something like that. You can clean it up because it has to be nice and symmetric. So there are many ways of doing this thing so that it's nice and symmetric. We'll clean it up in a minute. Okay, so, so this line, control that line, control middle axis. I'm gonna go click on this, this icon, make it symmetric. As I said, there are many ways of doing this. Top line, control, bottom line, control, middle axis. 
same define the definition again symmetric okay and notice that now if i grab this and move it it will move symmetrically okay uh, great so now i'm going to put some dimensions here based on my reading of this thing uh, here's the dimensions that that we have so this is 72 72 millimeters Uh, this is 18. You may want to double check these uh, thing. I'm okay. Uh, this length is 30. So what you see there, I am pretty sure that it looks like this T. Okay, and then I'm going to pad it down. And if you look at that, the, the padding is the diameter of the circle, which is six, the big circle. Okay, so I'm going to pad it down. Uh, exit. I pad it down. Uh, or up, it doesn't matter. All that, I'll do it down by 60. There. So if I turn this thing around, if I turn this thing around and show it like that, basically I have created this piece. Uh, the only thing is that that length is 65 that I forgot to dimension. This length, 65. Let me, let me go back here. Go back to that sketch. Yeah, this is 65. Okay. I forgot to do that. Look at the drawing. I think this is 65. Good. Exit, and now uh, I did pattern by 60. Very good. Now, on the side, I will sketch. Or actually, uh, what I'm going to do is because I want to uh, minimize um, my work. Oh, no, okay. On that side, I'm going to sketch a rectangle that goes like this. And we're going to clean it up in a minute. Okay, first of all, I want this to be coincident with that line. So that control this. I'm going to make it coincident. Feel free to do any way you want. Already these are coincident. If not, let's try to do that. Uh, this control that. Also coincident. I'm pretty sure it is already there. Yeah. Okay, that height based on the drawing, I have 28. And this is uh, from here to here is 68. So let me do that from here. So here is 68. Okay. And this dimension is 28. Check my work, please. Uh, 28. All right. No. Exit. And then you're going to pat this thing to the other side. 60, 65 millimeters in that direction, right? So that's one way of doing it. Pad this thing in the other direction, think of 65. Okay, and I'm hoping what you see here is actually this piece. Um, it looks, looks good, looks reasonable. Okay, now I'll do the other, other stuff. For example, on that top face, I will sketch a circle. Actually, let me exit. Uh, let me do that. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me. Yeah, okay, that, that's fine. On that top face, I will sketch. No problem. A circle of radius. I think it's going to be. Uh, well, let me, let me do it like this, first of all. And we're going to clean it up. So this point. I want it to be coincident, Con control that line. I want them to be coincident. Okay. And this, I want it to be coincident with that point. Control that, coincident. Very good. Okay. So, uh, uh, exit. Okay, we're going to pad this thing uh, based on the drawing. Uh, uh, it looks like, let, let me let me try. So, uh, 
it's going to be 10 millimeter, millimeter above that and 10 millimeter below this. So let's see what's the best way of doing this thing. Uh, why don't we do the following? Sure, we're going to go pad, mirror extent. Uh, actually, let me flip the direction. I go 10 millimeters up. Not mirror extent, 10 millimeters up. Okay. All right. Very good. And see, there are different ways of doing this thing. The, where is that? There are different ways of doing this thing. One is, for example, the following. Because of what I have here, uh, let me let me do the uh, let me do this. Uh, this is this is twenty eight, and I need another ten, which makes it. Uh, what is that? It makes that. Uh, uh, 28 plus 10 makes it uh, 30, 38. Okay, so let me go to that path, no problem. And I click on the more, and I go in the other direction. Let's see now, if I, if I go in the other direction, I put down 38. There we are, okay? Uh, look, you do it the way you want, all right? On that top face, I will sketch. I will sketch a circle. We make these two concentric, this control R, concentric, not coincident, concentric, and the dimension of that circle based on the drawing is diameter 20, okay? So let's go back there. Uh, dimension, diameter 20, say okay, exit, very good. And then you make a pocket. Yeah, so make a pocket all the way through. Uh, so up, up to last. There we are. So what you see here is actually this side, and I do exactly the same strategy on the other side. So let's go on that face, on this face. I will, I will sketch a circle. I'm going to clean this up for a second. This point control on that line, coincident. All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, so uh, this goes, uh, the, you know, that, that, that circle has the diameter of 60. Okay, very good. So here's what I'm gonna do. I say this circle control that point, coincident that makes the diameter equal to this, which is 60. Good. Oh, uh, this point has to be exactly halfway between that. So let me do this. This control that also coincident. That makes diameter 60. Fine. Ah, uh, not, not this coincident. That's what I meant. Okay, and the circle here, that circle has radius uh, 12 and a half with diameter 25. We can see that right there. Okay, so let's go do this. Uh, I'm sure 25, say okay, exit. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, I wanted this thing to be padded first. So let's go back here, let's get rid of this. I don't want that, exit. Okay, if you look at this drawing, it looks like that dimension, this dimension, see this whole thing is 25, this is 30, so this is 10 and 10, right? So uh, 10 and 10 in each way. So I, I can I can do this, uh, pad, 10, and then in the other direction, uh, 10 plus 30 is 40. Good. And on that face, I will draw the circle that I just erased. And I'm gonna make a pocket later on. So let me draw a circle like that and then make these two concentric. This control with that, you make it concentric. Okay, and the diameter of it based on the drawing 
based on this drawing that uh, diameter is inside diameter is uh, uh, diameter 25. Remember I erased it? Yeah. Diameter 25. 25. Say okay. Exit. And make a pocket all the way through up to last. Yep, last. Say okay. So my geometry has been done. This is that, unless I made a mistake. <laughs> I, I think it's okay. Now, uh, because I know that there's symmetry involved here, first of all, let me save this. And then I'm going to split it. I'm going to split it. So where is that saw? Split it with that middle plane. And it doesn't matter which side you pick. Pick. There we are. Okay. So this is half of that. And now apply material to it. So we're going to apply material. Apply material. What did it say? It made out of steel. So uh, steel is down here. Made of that part. Say OK. Steel has been added. Now if I double click, it's going to crash because apparently the administrator tell, told me that I need a service pack 7 to be installed on my laptop. But in your case, you should be OK. You double click on this so you can see the values. I'm not going to change it though. All right, good. So uh, we save everything, and then we're going to go to uh, generative structure analysis. So we go to uh, uh, start analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. Now, the, the, the instruction says use parabolic element with the default size. Now, default size, that's terrible. But that's okay. We just leave it the way it is because that's what the instruction said. Double click on this thing. Parabolic is good. Okay. Uh, I don't like that default size. In fact, later on, I may come and clean it up by, uh, by uh, you know, making it smaller. But that's okay right now. Right click, mesh visualization. If you want to see the mesh, it's right there. You don't have to see it, but if you want to see the mesh. So you can see that. These surfaces are not quite uh, following the whatever I have, but uh, anyway, that's what the problem says. So uh, right click, deactivate this. And then there's another piece of instruction says that uh, it says uh, use local mesh refinement around both holes for each case above, the size being half the default size as set by Katia. So what is set by Katia here? Let's check it out. Uh, double click. The size is... 12 point, let's say 12.7, okay, 12.7, so that's fine. So I'm gonna say, all right, uh, this is the toolbar that you need mesh specification, and this is the icon, local mesh size. You select this, half of that, half of the 12.7 was 6 point, uh, let's say 6 point, uh, I don't know, uh, a 3.5. And then I also select that guy, I can do it at the same time. See that? This is almost half of that. Say OK. And I have refined or done a local mesh refinement around both the both holes. So if you want to see the mesh, right click mesh visualization or activate that. You see that? Around the hole, around the hole, this hole and that hole, the elements are smaller. You can see that. These are big. Inside around the hole is small. Deactivate that. Okay, we are told that uh, this hole, the vertical one, is clamped. Inside of it is clamped. So this is a vertical one right here. Okay, so here's the clamp inside surface. That's all clamped. Okay, and you cannot leave these faces alone because these were planes of symmetry which were introduced by us, so you have to put them on surface slider or roller. That plane and that plane, say okay. All right. And then we apply a pressure of one megapascal on that top face. So where's the pressure? Look at the load. This is the first one is pressure. On that face, one MPA, one MPA. If you hit return, it's going to be MPA anyway, because the units are already set. Uh, set. Don't divide it by two, because pressure, you don't divide by two. Good. Save everything. File. Save management. Analysis. Save as. 
in that folder morning lab activity we can sorry <laughs> it's not what i meant it said morning lab activity may 10. say okay and lo and behold run it and things should work out don't worry about this warning message because you're getting it because of that the surface slider i don't know why they keep it like that good so look at the deflection this is clamped so this is going to bend down oh there there we are that's it that's what you expect good if you want to look at the stress distribution there we are and uh, let's change the rendering here right there okay there's big stresses here because there's no fillet never never happens in real life okay and uh, the you know I mean, obviously, you need a finer mesh and you need fillets there. As far, as far as this activity is concerned, you're all done. In the event, oh, look at the displacement, by the way. Here's the displacement, double click. Uh, so remember, this is a big piece of steel, gigantic piece of steel, and load of one megapascal pretty much is nothing. So we're talking about 0.04 deflection, three millimeter deflection. In the event that you want to see the elements here, go to rendering, the very last one. The very last one, because this icon is checked, check the uh, edges and points. You can also see the uh, the elements described here. All right, so that takes care of activity number one, uh, or activity in the morning lab. Now, if you have done enough work. I mean, please put an honest effort into this thing because the GA is going to check your work uh and at uh, what is that uh, at 10 20 and if he or she feels that you have done enough work if there anything to be cleaned up then uh, uh she's going to give you she's going to tell you or give you a full mark okay that's uh, pretty much it make sure you can do these things for the exams you may not have finished this whole thing but uh 